All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, so our meeting was called to order during our closed session, so we can begin. Uh, we're going to start with a special public hearing on harassment, intimidation, and bullying uh, to be presented by Barbara Gould. Barbara. Good evening, uh, Board of Education members and community members. Uh, my name is Barbara Gould, and I am the Director of Counseling, Health, and Wellness for West Windsor Plainsboro School District. In this role, I also serve as the HIB specialist for the district. Um, today, I will be sharing the Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying semi-annual report, which um, takes into account data that we have uh, for our investigations from January 2022 through July of 2022. So I'd like to start by sharing, um, you know, West Windsor Plainsboro School District is committed to providing our students with a safe, positive, and inclusive learning environment um, so that we can live out our mission statement, um, which states that we want to be able to empower all learners to thoughtfully contribute to a diverse and changing world with confidence, strength of character, and love of learning. And in order to be able to do that and reach that mission, we really invest um, as a district and we're very dedicated um, to ensuring that our students grow not only academically, but socially, emotionally, and behaviorally as well. In recognition of the importance of developing the whole child, um, our district has adopted a strategic goal that specifically um, is focused on social emotional learning. And with this goal, uh, we are able to take intentional steps as a district to implement activities, uh, curriculum, programs, and professional development for our staff that are supportive of students' social and emotional needs. Before we take a look at the harassment, intimidation, and bullying data, um, I'd like to just um, make a note that it's important to understand that in 2011, the New Jersey uh, legislature defined harassment, intimidation, and bullying um, by law. In order for an event um, or an incident to be considered harassment, intimidation, and bullying, it has to meet these four criteria. Uh, the first criteria is that the incident has to be um, a gesture, a written, verbal, or physical act, um, or an electronic communication, uh, whether it be a single incident or a series of incidents. Um, it also needs to be something that is reasonably perceived as being motivated either by an actual or a perceived characteristic. It has to take place on school property, at a school-sponsored event, on a school bus, or off school grounds. And um, the fourth prong is really important and one that we consider in many cases. It has to substantially disrupt or interfere with the orderly operation of the school or with the rights of other students. So for the next few slides, we will review some of the harassment, intimidation, and bullying data uh, from the investigations that have been reported to the Board of Education from January through July 2022. In this slide, uh, we have a comparison of the investigations that have been done, both uh, inv total investigations and also the founded investigations that meet those four criteria that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and this compares the last four years, uh, 2019, 2020, 21, and 22. Um, as you can see in the slide, our investigation totals um, and our founded HIB have gone up and have increased um, from previous years. Um, it is important to note that the 21 and 20 school years were during the pandemic, and so um, our case numbers were significantly lower because we didn't have a great number of our students uh, present in school uh, full time. And so that's an important piece to take into consideration. You know, and the other thing that I think is important to note about this slide is that we have observed, you know, that our students have had um, some, some difficulty adjusting as they've returned back from the pandemic. And many students have experienced different 
um, situations. And so, you know, they, they missed some of the social and emotional um, skill development that we have in place um, because of the fact that they were not in school. So we as a district anticipated that our numbers would be higher um, this year as a result of all students being back in person. And we have done many proactive um, things to address this need, as I'll talk about later in, in the slides. This uh, chart here um, shares um, the comparison between founded and unfounded uh, investigations. As you can see, it's about 46% unfounded and about 54% um, founded. And these numbers are very typical or percentages are very typical from previous years as well. About half and half are founded versus unfounded. Meaning that an incident occurred and was reported and investigated, um, but not necessarily um, didn't necessarily meet those four criteria that are defined by law. Um, it is also important to note that it doesn't mean that the situation was not addressed or that the event wasn't addressed by administration or by the counseling team. Sometimes um, investigations that are done that are unfounded are, you know, might be a, a, a violation of the code of conduct so that they're addressed in a different way. It just doesn't meet the legal definition of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. We also like to take a look at uh, the investigations by month just to see if we see any patterns or anything that um, is important to note. And uh, when our school safety and climate team This slide will show uh, the grade level uh, investigation comparisons. Um, and as you can note here, um, our elementary and middle schools uh, had greater number of investigations, and that's due to a number of reasons. Uh, one, just developmentally, socially, um, and emotionally, where students are, especially in the middle school. It's sort of where they're figuring out who they are, their, um, how they fit in, um, all of those things. So this is not atypical from previous years. Um, our Elementary numbers were um, slightly raised, as I mentioned earlier. We did see some challenges with our students um, in the ways that they've transitioned back. Um, you know, they missed um, several years of social and emotional character development. Uh, training, experiences, socialization with their peers, and so that has definitely impacted in the ways that in which that they relate to one another. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we, we have done a number of things proactively to address that. Um, on this slide here, we take a look at uh, the investigations by distinguishing characteristics. So as um, something is reported, we try to think about you know, what category it might fit under, um, whether the comment was related to or the situation was related to uh, one of these characteristics. And as you can see here, um, appearance seemed to be the uh, number one distinguishing characteristics. Um, and, and so, you know, comments that were made um, based on, you know, maybe students' height or weight or uh, what they're wearing, um, anything related to those um, features might be what we would focus on for appearance if that was what the report indicated. And then also uh, race and ethnicity um, came out. 
Um, th that was an important piece for our school climate and culture teams to take a look at as well um, and to make some um, suggestions for ways that we could incorporate both appearance um, and race and ethnicity and, and some of our other categories that are that are higher and represented here as part of our action plans for next year. So what do we need to do to you know highlight this and to have conversations with students about um, these areas that stood out as being more, reported more frequently? So I mentioned some of the patterns and trends already. Um, as we saw earlier in the slides, we had an overall increase in general in investigations, um, you know, both founded HIBs um, and just total investigations. The other thing I wanted to mention besides, um, you know, how our students have transitioned back and some of the areas of struggle that they might have had, um, that could also be contributing to the number of investigations. We did have um, additional trainings at the beginning of this year uh, for our administrative team. Uh, we had a number of administrators kind of change roles uh, within the district. And so we had trainings uh, with our attorneys in order to understand the law better, to understand reporting. And so I think it's a positive thing because what, what it means is that we're definitely um, investigating everything that comes as being reported as harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Not all are founded, but everything is being investigated. So whereas in the past, we might have had you know, situations where um, administrators could predetermine that it didn't meet those four criteria, now we're going through the investigation process each time, and so that also contributes to the number of investigations that we're doing. Um, you, as you saw, you know, we had an increase in investigations during the month of June, um, middle and, and elementary schools uh, with greater numbers. I think another reason for that might also be, be that our high school students don't always report situations, uh, just developmentally where they are. Sometimes they address it themselves or they handle it in a different way and not everything gets reported. Um, and then, as I also mentioned, the distinguishing characteristics most being reported were appearance and race and ethnicity. Um, and these are two areas that we definitely will be addressing with our school culture and climate teams and making recommendations for how we can proactively um, have conversations with students and put in things in place for them to um, have an understanding that those are areas that are problematic. So we are also required by the state of New Jersey um, to conduct uh, an anti-bullying rubric, which essentially is a self-assessment, um, and that gets reported to the Department of Education every year. Um, and we typically do really well as a district. Uh, the anti-bullying rubric uh, measures eight core elements and um, it's really a means for us to be able to understand all of the best practices in implementing anti-bullying uh, regulations. Um, and it was developed by experts, representatives from K-12 institutions, community agencies, uh, child advocacy groups, and it applies um, year to year. So every year we report out on the, these eight core elements. Each school has to do their own rubric, and then we also have um, a district average. So the way that it's scored is that every indicator uh, within the eight areas um, is scored on a three-point scale. Um, as you can see here, three being the maximum, meaning that we're exceeding requirements. Uh, the maximum school grade for each school is uh, 78 points. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, school grades are determined through a self-assessment, and that is done by the school safety or school uh, climate teams. And those teams um, comprise of students, uh, when appropriate at certain levels, like middle school and high school, include students, um, parents, counselors, teachers, and administration. Here are the first four elements. Uh, element number one speaks to uh, harassment, intimidation, and bullying programs, approaches, or any other initiatives to target um, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. And our average uh, district um, score for that component was 13 and 4 tenths out of 15. Um, we did you know, really well in that area. 
Core element two talks about training on the Board of Education policies related to HIB, and we were close to a perfect score there. Uh, we have lots of training opportunities for staff members, all of our staff members, and actually our students are also trained, um, and we also have uh, parent trainings uh, during the PTA meetings um, early on in the school year that all address um, the HIB uh, policies. Core element number three focuses on other staff instruction and training programs aside from the district um, HIB policies. Um, and as you can see here, we were at 13 and 6 tenths out of 15. Um, our curriculum and instruction on harassment, intimidation, and policy and related information and skills, uh, we were six out of six, all 10 schools. All 10 schools uh, scored. I just turn it off. It's good. The, the, um, the table mics have wires that run underneath, so someone may be touching one of the wires by accident, and it might be setting that off. <laughs> <laughs> like moving away from the wires. Um, so uh, our curriculum and instruction, as I mentioned earlier, and also our strategic goal uh, with SEL, or social emotional learning, really contributes to us pretty much having a perfect score in this area. We're very strong as a district. In core element um, number five, uh, we were at eight and two tenths out of nine, um, and that's HIV personnel, um, and that speaks to you know, training all of our different personnel and their clear understanding of our processes. Um, school level HIV incident reporting procedures, we were near perfect on that. We have really strong reporting procedures. Our, our staff is uh, pretty knowledgeable about that. Also, our students report um, very frequently, which is great. Uh, we want to see that. We want students reaching out when they have a concern. Um, and we have a pretty... Um, well, you know, informed and described HIV investigation process, and which is uh, core element number seven, which we also, out of all 10 schools, had a perfect score on. So when they were looking at the rubric, you know, the, the team self-reported that they felt that that was a really a huge strength of ours, as well as our reporting processes. Uh, we utilize Hipster to keep, to streamline that process, to keep all of our information in one system that we have access to. It, keep, it helps us to abide to the timelines. Um, it gives us all of the information that we need. It makes sure that you know we go through every part of the investigative process. So that has been a very helpful tool for us as a district um, to ensure that you know we're doing our due diligence and making sure that each situation is handled appropriately. And so here you can see uh, the average school grades by um, each level. And we did fairly well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 78 total points um, is the maximum. So I wanted to take a little bit of time just to talk about, um, as I mentioned, we had, we have quite a number of proactive um, culture and climate um, initiatives and, and activities and things that we have done as a district and continue to do um, in order to address uh, students' um, needs here. Um, and I wanted to you know, share with you that this is a very short list of numerous things. Like I could have written 10 slides of things that we do proactively, um, try to kind of capture bigger themes. Um, here. So we have ongoing professional development um, for our staff related to both our strategic goals around um, social emotional learning and our equity goal as well. Um, we also have professional development and training um, from our district attorneys for all of our counselors, our anti-bullying specialists, our administrators related to all of the harassment, intimidation, and bullying processes and the laws uh, that we're required to abide by. Um, training happens for every single staff member, um, whether it, you know, no matter what their role is, whether it's a teacher, an instructional assistant, um, our cafeteria um, aides, everyone receives uh, training related to our harassment, intimidation, and bullying processes and um, law. We also have um, school-based equity teams that meet throughout the year. 
um, that help to in ensure that there are activities and programming and things happening uh, for our staff in relation to professional development. We had our district equity and inclusivity uh, goal stakeholder group last year that met throughout the year um, and created action plans you know, to implement different, part, different things that will help to support our staff and our students. Uh, we have school-wide assemblies and experiences for students related to social emotional learning. Um, we had student-led uh, webinars and lunch conversations um, at both high schools and at our middle schools as well. Uh, we have school counselors going into classrooms and doing classroom lessons that are focused on anti-bullying um, and, and also on conflict resolution, um, helping students to be able to manage their emotions, I mean, a number of different topics. Um, school counselors also run small groups for students at all levels, um, and they also provide one-on-one -on -one sessions as necessary to support students. We have uh, board-certified behavior analysts. Um, we have two general education uh, behavioral an analysts that help to support our students that have different behavioral needs. We also have student assistance counselors as a district, um, both at our middle schools and at our high school that do proactive programming um, to identify our students that might need additional support and also just in general to inform students about positive practices um, and they serve as our anti-bullying specialists. And we have um, behavior, uh, Rutgers Behavioral Health Clinicians at our middle schools and high schools, and they also support the elementary schools. Um, and these clinicians are here to help support our students with me mental health needs. And we have team days, theme days, weeks, all of those things to celebrate social emotional learning, um, to highlight all of the great initiatives that are happening uh, throughout the district. Uh, the elementary schools this year had a social emotional learning day uh, where the entire day was focused on um, social emotional learning and different activities were done at different elementary schools to support that. And then we also have social emotional learning um, lessons taking place at the elementary level during morning meetings um, as well. So we have morning meetings right in our schedules uh, for the elementary level. Every classroom has a morning meeting time built into their schedule uh, to support social emotional learning too. And then one of the big things that happens um, in the spring and this year, uh, schools did it as a school-based uh, climate summit. So as I mentioned, uh, the school climate teams uh, came together with students, parents, staff, um, and the anti-bullying specialists and administrators. And they took a look at the HIB, uh, the Harassment, Intimidation, Bullying Report, and all of the data that we have um, in the district. And they were able to think about what are next steps, what are some goals, what are some things that they want to really focus on um, as a school. And um, you know, students reflected on the entire year Year, everything that has happened um, and ways that they want to improve for their school. So for example, one school came up with an idea that they really want to focus on training um, students uh, to help support each other with peer conflict at one of the elementary schools. And so next year they're going to pilot a program where they have um, students you know, helping to mediate conflict. So those are some of the things that come out of these climate summits. They create action plans and ideas for ways that they can improve the areas in which um, they felt that they were def deficient or areas in which they just saw a need for improvement. And I'd like to just end with um, posting our mission statement um, specific to our harassment and intimidation and bullying um, practices. And really the goal of, of this is that we continue to stay committed you know, to creating safe, equitable, and inclusive environments for all of our students so that each of them can reach their fullest potential. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Gold. Are there any uh, questions from board members? Okay, go ahead. I was just curious, uh, with the slide, the first slide with the uh, that compares the years um, I was assuming from 2019 and then the drop in 2020 in 20 and 21 it probably was mostly online um, interactions for the 2020 2021 for 
this past year. Do you have an idea of like how many are online, in person, like that sort of breakdown? Sure, so I, I don't know the exact number, but I, sure, I can get that for you. Um, however, I would say that the location that um, came out to be the greatest was actually in the classroom. So it is not electronic communication um, that where we're finding um, students um, having conflict or having situations that require inv investigation. Cl the classroom was like by far the location that presented the most investigations. I was gonna say, that's probably what, to your point, that when the student's coming back into the school, Correct. just sort of reacclimating mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. I guess with that in mind, um, moving into this upcoming year, are there like specific, because um, I know you have, there's a whole list of programs, like mm -hmm. themes maybe that, um, that, you, that, that the district would uh, work with with kids um, at the different levels? Just with that in mind that the everyone coming back from the past two years. Sure. I think at the elementary level, um, what the administration and the climate teams had shared um, was that self-regulation would be one, helping students to um, have an understanding kind of of their zones of regulation, um, how they're feeling, and then thinking about what strategies they could utilize um, to be able to address um, if they're feeling at a heightened, um, you know, level level uh, that they would have strategies to put in place rather than having conflict with peers or having situations that are inappropriate. Um, so that was an area of focus for sure for, for the elementary levels. Uh, for middle school, um, they really wanted to take a look at the distinguishing characteristics and create some action plans around um, how do we talk with students differently about the impact maybe that they have when they're commenting on people's appearance or and or what's happening uh, with you know making comments about race and, and or ethnicity as well. Louisa? Do you anticipate elevated levels for next year as well? Truthfully, looking at our mental health uh, referrals in addition to what we've seen this year, um, I think it's going to take a couple of years before we level off. Um, our students, you know, are, are reacclimating with learning how to be with peers all of the time. There's social pressure, there are all of those things. Plus there's a lot of other stuff going on society-wise um, that also adds to some of this. But yes, it's, go it's probably going to take a few years. Dana? Um, thank you so much for your report. It was a lot of details and appreciate that. Um, so after, so um, I was wondering if any of the um, programs have been enhanced or changed after, you know, after the hiatus of the time when students weren't, um, you know, most students were not in school, physically in school. Like what things have changed or updated like in terms of some of the programs for the students? Um, I mean, I think that. one huge change that will be helpful is the adoption of our equity and inclusivity goal um, because, you know, at different levels we will have uh, school-based teams that are really looking at how do we make our environments as, you know, safe um, and inclusive as possible, which then leads to a positive, you know, school climate and culture, which is ultimately what you want in order for students to uh, feel feel that way and, and to be able to move forward. Um, the other thing is that the SEL uh, committee has also been looking at um, ways to you know implement um, in every classroom during every learning experience what are strategies um, in the classroom that teachers can use uh, at all levels as well. Um, at the elementary level we have um, talked about um, how we could utilize our CASEL uh, framework which is the framework that we use for social emotional learning um, and look at those components um, um, and how we can do some direct instruction with uh, different parts of it, such as uh, self-awareness or social awareness. Um, there are different like skills that students need, and how can we infuse our uh, guidance lessons to be more aligned with the CASEL framework and more um, direct instruction on it and giving kids opportunities to role play, to be able to think through scenarios of how they would act differently, um, and really to build those skills. The other thing that I think we have as a district that 
that's really positive is that the ways in which our teaching and learning, um, specifically um, our instructional you know, methods and, and our curriculum are designed to give students um, ample opportunities to be able to practice those skills just by the nature of the way that they interact in the classroom. Um, you know, we really foster collaborative learning um, well as a district, and now it's how do we do that and also teach into those moments when students maybe are not applying those skills the way that they should or, you know, complementing them when they are, so capitalizing on the ways in which our teaching and learning already happens. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Gold. Appreciate sure. it. All right, so that takes us now to this special opportunity for public comment, just specifically on the harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Uh, the board invites thoughts and reactions on the district semi-annual report of harassment, intimidation, and bullying from members of our community who are present. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement. Each comment should be directed to the presiding officer, not individual members of the board, and must be made in accordance with the procedures and three-minute time limit set forth in board policy 0167. This public comment period shall be limited to 10 minutes. Are there any comments? Okay. Hearing none, I will close that public comment portion. Uh, and so now we are, uh, can I get a motion to uh, accept the January 1, 2022 to June 30th, 2022 district semi-annual report of harassment, intimidation, and bullying, and to verify that the school district and school grade report issued by the New Jersey Department of Education was reviewed as required by the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act, and that this report was posted on the district website. Louisa and Graylin. Um, Chris? Okay, we'll start with Ms. Bonsall. Yes. And next, Ms. Ho. Yes. Ms. Krug. Yes. And next is Ms. Maliga. Yes. Ms. Sweaty. Shetty, sorry. Yes. I'll say Sweta, sorry. <laughs> Shetty. And and okay, so 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 next so next is Ms. McEwen. Yes. Ms. Juliana. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so that will adjourn the special public hearing on harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Uh, I don't believe we have any presentations or reports tonight, so we're going to go ahead with the first opportunity for public comments. Uh, the board invites thoughts and reactions on agenda items and items of concern from members of our community who are present. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement, which will be limited to three minutes in accordance with board policy 0167. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. This public comment period shall be limited to 60 minutes. Are there any comments in this public opportunity? Okay. All right. So hearing none, we'll close um, this public comment portion. We'll now turn to the Board of Education Committee reports, starting with Administration and Facilities Committee. Dana? Okay. Hello. Good evening. Let me just... um, so the, the Administration and Facilities Committee met on July 14th. First, we reviewed several policies and regulations, and we recommend them for first reading on tonight's agenda, which is um, policy one, oh, I hopefully I have the numbers rightly, <laughs> 1121 um, benefits covering non-affiliated central office administrative employees, category C, um, P1122 benefits covering um, non-affiliated administrative employees, category A, then um, another policy on benefits covering non-affiliated school security officers, which is category D, um, benefits covering form foremen, and benefits covering non-affiliated support staff, which is category B. The committee also reviewed the following policies and regulations and recommend them for a second reading and approval at um, tonight's meeting. This is the um, examination for cause and harassment, intimidation, and bullying policy emergency and crisis situations policy, and um, policy and regulation for cooperation with law enforcement agencies. Next, the committee discussed overnight trips and recommend reinstating overnight trips for the 2022-2023 school year with appropriate health and safety measures subject to local health conditions. The committee also recommends reopening district facilities to community organizations for the 22-23 school year 
per regulation 7510 use of school facilities with appropriate health and safety measures and subject to local health conditions. Next, the committee discussed district safety and security measures, and the committee also got an update on the referendum, uh, re on several referendum topics. Um, the dance studio at High School North is near completion. Punch list items continue at High School South. Community middle school renovations to the band engineering rooms and science lab continue. And masonry and plumbing and roofing for the Wyckoff addition are underway which I saw today because I drove by there today. Um, the committee will next meet on August 23rd. Okay. Thank you, Dana. Are there any questions from board members? Okay, we'll go next to the curriculum committee. Thanks. Uh, the curriculum committee met on July 12th. Uh, we began the meeting with a presentation from Ms. Um, Alexis Drummond, who spoke um, to us about about her research proposal. Uh, it's titled The Perceived Value of Participation in a Professional Learning Community, uh, which is part of her doctoral studies. Um, next, Dr. Nathan shared the framework and theme for the administrative retreat. The retreat is four days from August 9th through 12th um, of professional development for the entire administrative team. And this year's theme is Cultivating Belonging. Uh, next on the, on the agenda are several items that the curriculum committee recommends for approval. Uh, first, evaluation instruments. Uh, we have listed here the Charlotte Danielson Framework for Teaching as the evaluation instrument for all certified staff except administrators, and then for administrators, New Jersey Principal Evaluation for Professional Learning. Um, and the other instrument is the highly effective option and the alternative evaluation rubric are being used as part of the evaluation process for highly effective teachers. Uh, second was the professional development. Uh, we have listed reading and writing, well, professional development for uh, approval tonight. We have listed the reading and writing project network training through Columbia University uh, at a cost of approximately uh, 126000 um, the 22, 22 and 23 contract covers consultant days and travel expenses, which will be paid through the um, Every Student Succeeds Act Title II grant funds. Um, and the other professional development was a one, AP hist one AP chemistry teacher to attend an AP chemistry summer institute at uh, the University of Texas um, virtually from the 25th of July to the 28th at a cost of $650. Um, Profession, next was professional development consultants. Uh, the committee recommends approval of the following presenters. First, Kelsey uh, Jones, Kelsey M. Jones, PhD, uh, visiting professor of education, um, Africana studies at Williams College to present six racial literacy professional development sessions uh, to district administrators and teachers uh, from August 10th through the 18th at a cost not to exceed uh, a little over 14,000. Next, the answer. Uh, from, with Rutgers University to present a one day and a two hour training, uh, sex ed, honestly, to district health education teachers during the 22-23 school year uh, at a cost not to exceed $5,000. Um, for the high school program, the committee recommends to approve one high school student to enroll in an online course, Algebra One. Um, and one high school student to enroll in an online course, Algebra Two, and then also the high school student to enroll in an online course, Biology, all with uh, Educare, and um, each course not to exceed $195. Um, next for approval is the uh, PSA, PSAT testing materials. We recommend entering into an agreement with the College Board for the purchase of PSAT testing materials for the upcoming school year. The total cost of the materials for both high schools are approximately $26,340. Um, next, professional contracts. We recommend approval of a district membership in Teachers as Scholars at Princeton University for the upcoming school year at a cost of 2400 Membership includes 17 professional development days at Teachers um, as Scholars seminars. And also on, last on the agenda for approval is, um, let me see, the, recommend, the recommendation of um, disposal of the following obsolete items, uh, 517 books from Town Center, 930 books from Maurice Hawk Media Center, 322 from Grover Media Center, 
uh, these items are either so outdated as to no longer serve a worthy instruct as worthy instructional tools, or they are worn and or damaged uh, as to preclude effective use and economical repair or restoration. Uh, the last thing that we discussed was in closed session, the curriculum committee discussed and investigated the district's compliance with the New Jersey Strengthening Gifted and Talented Education Act. The, our next meeting is August 23rd. Thanks. Thank you, Loy. Are there any questions from board members? Okay. We'll go next to the Finance Committee. Louisa? The Finance Committee met on July 20th. Administration shared the financial reports for the month and indicated that no lines are overexpended and there are funds to complete the year. The committee reviewed the agenda items for the tonight's board meeting. Several motions of note on the agenda for approval include a technology bid award for the engineering robotics lab at Community and South, a minor change in the official name for the capital project for the next phase of the Wyckoff work, and also on the agenda are several cooperative purchases for technology infrastructure, several change orders for referendum projects, and staff development travel approvals. Also on the agenda is a motion to approve a minor STEM classes in non-public schools grant award for the 22-23 year. The district has rolled over into the 22-23 fiscal year today, and the audit for the year, the closeout audit, has not yet started. The Special Education Job Skills Program would like to have a closed bin placed at High School North in a secure area as part of their lost and found project. Currently, lost items are inventoried and pictures are placed on the district's website. The many items that are never claimed are donated at the end of the year. With the placement of the closed bin at North, the items will still be donated, but the Job Skills Program would receive $75 per month to place the bin at North. The district is... Um, waiting on the review of our application for the Certificate of Excellence designation, and ASBO International is still working virtually and is behind schedule on their reviews. They expect to complete their review of our information by the end of August. The committee next discussed cyber insurance. The district's insurance broker went out for proposals for excess cyber insurance coverage after the district staffs completed a self-audit. One company responded to the RFP. The premium would be $132,000 for the excess coverage. This was discussed by staff and the committee. Recently, the district went out for bid for athletic transportation routes twice, and no one bid. Since there are no bidders in two attempts, the district reached out to contractors directly and negotiated the route pricing with vendors where they would accept the work and there are motions on the agenda to approve these negotiated athletic routes. We got a food service report. During the month of June, the food service program provided an average of 460 breakfasts and 5,960 lunches per day. During the, during the entire 21-22 school year, 1,084,779 meals were served. Meals served during the previous two years were 463,000 for 2021 and 381,000 for 1920. So obviously uh, the, year, the free year made a big difference. Sodexo held one job fair in June and six people attended resulting in the hiring of one person. The district is trying to pursue point of sale equipment including terminals, pin pads and scanners for the cafeterias. However, no bids were received at the bid opening. There is an agenda item to acknowledge that no bids were received and the district may rebid these items. Recently, the district received $176,813 from the New Jersey Department of Agriculture for supply chain assistance for the purchase of unprocessed or minimally processed domestic food products. Under construction updates, staff updated the committee on referendum construction projects. Work continues in the renovation of the community. The high school north stand studio project is most complete. Would you like to stop?
microphone is, is the kick that way. Yeah. What's the sounds it's making. <laughs> Keep going? All right. Go for it. Wave at me if I should yeah. stop. All right. <laughs> Bids for the High School North Culinary Arts and Library renovations are being rejected as they came in 30% over estimate. The High School South project has a temporary certificate of occupancy for the renovated areas. At CMS, the work on the workshop, engineering, technology, and music classrooms is moving along with wall painting, ductwork completion, and casework installation. Work in the art room is continuing with the under slab work passing inspection so the contractor can begin pouring concrete and backfilling. At Wyckoff, insulation, exterior brick, electric lines, and ground face block are being installed. Roofing preparation work is occurring in anticipation of the roof installation. Staff also reported on the progress of energy savings improvement projects. The town center chiller is operational and cooling the building. Controls work continues. The cooling tower has been installed at Village and is operating. Controls work continues at Village as well. For summer projects, concrete work is being completed at North. An office in CMS has been renovated. An old storage trailer has been removed from Millstone. The Wyckoff Annex, which is being used by curriculum supervisors, is being renovated with updated finishes. Dr. Adderhold gave the committee a quick update on the opening of the school. There are still staffing shortages in many areas. Under other business, staff reported that on July 13th, 132 solar renewable energy credits were sold on the open market, totaling $30,396. Also, district administration met with Plainsboro Township building officials to walk the 72 Grovers Mill Road property. The committee will next meet on Tuesday, August 23rd. Thank you, Louisa. Are there any questions from board members? I was to say, if there's one thing well, I have everyone together, um, the meritorious budget award program that we apply for each year, the, out, the um, design of it has changed, and we're going to be reaching out to you for a little um, a small bio. So uh, we'll be reaching out to you in, in, within a week to ask you to put something together for it, because the, the new di and we'll give an, a sample. The, um, just because the format has increased so much, they want more demographic information of the community and uh, members and administration and uh, board members. Thanks, Chris. Right. Okay, we'll now move to the voting portion of our meeting. Um, first item is administration. Uh, can I get a motion for administration items one through 10 plus the uh, orange addendum? Uh, Dana and Shweta, any questions or comments? Okay, we'll start with Ms. Ho. Yes. Ms. Krug. Yes. Next, Ms. Maliga. Yes. Ms. Shetty. Yes. Ms. Bonsell. Yes. Ms. McEwen. Yes. Ms. Juliana. Yes. Okay. We now go to curriculum items one through 11. Can I get a motion for those? Uh, Loy and Pooja. Any questions or comments? Chris? Okay, we'll start with Ms. Krug. Yes. Ms. Maliga. Yes. Ms. Shetty. Yes. Ms. Bonsell. Yes. Ms. Ho. Yes. Ms. McEwen. Yes. Ms. Juliana. Yes. All right. Can I get a motion for finance items 1 through 19 plus the blue addendum? Uh, Louisa and Graylin. Any questions or comments? Okay. okay we'll start with Ms. Maliga. Uh, yes to all, but uh, for finance item 1A. Uh, I abstain from check number 215863. Okay. So, uh, and next we have Ms. Shetty. Yes. Uh, anyway, Ms. Bonsell? Yes. Ms. Ho? Yes. Ms. Krug? Yes. Ms. McEwen? Yes. Ms. Juliana? Yes. Okay. Now go to personnel items. Can I get a motion? For personnel item one plus the green and pink addendum, uh, Dana and Shweta. Okay, we'll start with Ms. Shetty. Yes. Ms. Bonsell. Uh, yes. 
Okay, next is Ms. Ho. Yes. Ms. Krug. Yes. Ms. Oliga. Yes. Ms. McEwen. Yes. Ms. Juliana. Yes. Okay. And we also just voted on some retirements, so I'd like to acknowledge those. Um, we have uh, Rita Chow, who is uh, retiring after 10 years in the district as a secretary in the central office. We have uh, Tina Johnston, who is secretary in central office, retiring after five years in the district. And Cindy Burby, who is a cafeteria aide from town center, who's retiring after one year in the district. So just want to thank all of you for your years of service to our district and your dedication. So thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to move to the approval of our minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Um, Loy and Pooja, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Uh, yes, uh, I need to abstain from items C and D, the June 28th meeting minutes and close executive session minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to abstain from the, the same June 28th meeting as well. So. Okay, any board liaison reports? Uh, any new business? That takes us to the second opportunity for public comments. The board invites comments from members of our community who are present. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement, which will be limited to three minutes in accordance with board policy 0167. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. This public comment period shall be limited to 15 minutes. Are there any public comments? Hmm? Hearing none. Yeah, sure. Okay. So with the second opportunity for uh, public comment closed, I just wanted just to acknowledge um, a couple of personnel matters that were voted on this evening. Um, please note that in the audience tonight, Sue Tataro, um, Sue uh, has been our uh, supervisor of oh. instruction, uh, focusing on K-5. Uh, this evening, she um, was named as a special assistant for strategic initiatives, so congratulations to Sue. Um, also on the board agenda tonight, uh, a change in our world language program. Um, we have had a supervisor of K-12 world languages um, and uh, DLI, uh, a little bit of a reorganization. We are going to have a K-5 and a 612 supervisor of world language, uh, English language learning and dual language immersion. Um, so we'll have, as the program has grown over time, there's a need to reduce some reorganization. Ashley Warren, who has served as the K-12 role for the past year, will be moving to the 612. Um, and Carl Cooper, who has been our social studies supervisor, will be moving to the K-5 role. So congratulations to both Carl and Ashley. And then we've had two uh, new administrators joining us. Now we have firm dates on when they are starting. Sarah Bright, new principal over at uh, Maurice Hawk Elementary School will be joining us in mid-August, on August 17th. Um, and Valerie Rodriguez actually started Monday. Valerie's a new um, assistant principal at High School South. Um, that is vacated when Emily Krevling moved to Supervisor of Language Arts, which was vacated with retirement of Kathy Riley from Supervisor of Language Arts. So. Uh, a lot of moving parts uh, within the administration. Just wanted to make sure everyone uh, is keeping score. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Good. All right. So I think with that, we are ready to adjourn. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Louisa and Loy, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Those. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. <laughs>